Hi everyone and welcome to the final video in the WLED bedside lamp project. In this one we're going to look at the 3D printed parts we've got here, how they all get to put together and finish off the project. So just to quickly go through the parts we've got here, we've got the main body, we have the cover that goes over the bottom of it and obviously protects all the electronics from external poking and prodding. Uh, there's this piece here which actually slots in and actually acts as the clamp piece for this so basically stops it from twisting left and right. There's the button for the front of it and then finally this piece here which is actually the bit that goes into the middle and is what this the actual lamp connects onto. So let's get started with building this. Now I have started some of this already uh, in part, the original idea was I was going to get some done to reduce the time, but also I started doing a recording of this and completely forgot to add my microphone. So it wasn't connected, so I recorded into thin air. So yeah, um, so the parts I've already done. So this piece here, I've done actually uh, a few days ago actually, uh, where I was just testing to make sure this would all go right together and I've just decided to keep it um, rather than waste the plastic. The newer version of this, which I'll put up on Thingiverse, actually has some cutouts. So the idea is as this heats up, it can actually draw air up and into it. Let me just lock the exposure here. Um, and add a bit back in. Yeah, let's stop the exposure yo-yoing. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep that because why waste plastic? This piece here, this is as far as I actually got with the first video, but I've already inserted some more brass inserts. These are actually smaller ones, they're actually cheaper as well. So uh, this is the bit that this will connect onto. I wanted to use brass inserts just for the additional sort of uh, clamping force that could be added onto it. This doesn't need a lot. I'm not gonna be really wrenching the thing down, but it just means that it will hopefully hold a little bit easier and it'd be slightly easier to get everything to actually align properly without the threads being cut into it. Uh, you can obviously see I've already put the power lead on the back of it as well. So the next thing I want to do is, let's see, how are we going to get this together? Um, now the original thought I had with it was that this cable would actually feed through here, through this part of the uh, lamp and then basically through here and then into here. But I'm actually thinking it's probably going to be a bit awkward because what I want to need to do is get this cable underneath so possibly yeah if we have that come up through there the power cable i want to come underneath as well just so it's out of the way so let's get that there. so uh, the circuit itself that's just being held in with standard uh self-tapping screws so i've just got these small plastic uh self-tappers i.e they're for plastic they're obviously they're made of metal they aren't made of plastic but they are for this exact purpose so um, i'm gonna put two in to begin with uh, now there's a small piece i didn't factor in right hang on i have to re basically what i can see happening is because these cables are here there isn't enough room so it's pushed this angled right over so that will never line up so we need to reorientate that i've also just thought as well i need to get my switch in. So this is the other piece that I started to make up. Um, just a standard six mil tactile switch. All I've done is splay the legs out so that it's now effectively surface mount. The reason I've done that, because of the way this actually goes in, um, this all forms part of the uh, section that will actually hold the front in place. So it actually bolts this through this and then into this just to hold everything in one uh, continuous piece. I've done it that way largely just because of the fact that it solved having two additional bolts effectively because otherwise what I ended up, initially the design had two bolts as well here, but then there wasn't quite enough height from the circuit board to clear this lip. And I didn't want to make this too thick because otherwise it looked like there's a massive chin sort of sitting out the bottom here. So yeah, so this all forms part of it. So I effectively converted this to be self uh, surface mount. So you've got two holes in there for the screws to go in or through technically. Um, so what I'm gonna do first, let's solder this onto the board. Now there's no orientation needed for this. Obviously it's just a switch. So I'll just solder that in place. Okay, so that's that soldered. 
Uh, right, so now let's get that. Swing that around underneath there. Pop it out the bottom. Ooh, this is convoluted. So there we go, there's our little package. Right, for the next thing I wanna do is plug it in and hope nothing blows up. So again, hopefully without the LEDs being plugged in, we should hear the LED click on, uh, LED, sorry, relay click on. And we don't, that's not good. Now it might mean I've got the polarity of this around the wrong way. Uh, let's open it up again and have another go. Cables are now caught up. I read an article once on why cables always seem to get caught up around each other. And one of the thoughts that they had with it is that there are more ways for cables to get caught up than there are ways for them to stay separate. So with everything moving around a lot, when you've got things that are in bags, that are in motion, then that's partially the reason why. So let's have a look at this. Let's plug this in. Now, thankfully, I've got my diode there, so I know even if, if this is the wrong polarity, I'm not going to cause any damage to my circuit. So let's try this first. And it's around the wrong way. Great. Okay. That's why we put protection diodes in. Right, so let's try this before I spend time bolting it all together. Right, perfect. So click and the LEDs come on. Brilliant. Now just to put it all back in again. Right, so again, let's give this another quick check and make sure. Perfect. Click and I can see the LED glowing brightly inside. So now it's just a final assembly. Of course. <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot. I need to take the bottom off again, don't I? Because I need to gain access to that hole so I can thread it into there. Really should have bolted that the other way around, but hey ho. Okay, so what we need to do here is pop him on there. We then get our little, which then slides into there. We also need, oh, this could be tight. Uh, where did I put my Allen key? There it is. So what I want to do first is try to, yeah. Ooh, that went through the hole for a change. So we'll bolt that in from the underside. I hope. And there we go. So in theory, I could have left it like that. Um, but obviously this can move around a little bit. And because the bolt is on the inside, and all down on the inside here, um, I don't want to end up in a situation where it moves, it falls off, and then I've got to dismantle the whole thing again. So I'm going to pop them in there, and that's what this piece is for. So line that up best as I can see through anyway. Pop him on, and then bolt him down. And if I got my maths right, these should not be touching the circuit board. So there we go, nice tight fit on there. So the idea is, because this is a glass diffuser on this thing, it actually adds enough weight that should stop that from 
tilting as you try to press it. So that's that. Let's add you in. In fact, before we add you on there, let's connect you in. And then pop that down there. Twist it around a bit more, we can probably. Mm. Right, that might need a bit of hot glue just to hold that in place. So let's plug this back in again. And there we go. Perfect. So that's on. Right, let me just reorientate everything so that you can see this from the angle. And we'll put the diffuser on and we'll look at the final product. Basically got the uh, standard install that I've done so far. So, and there are some static colors. So you can have one that I called early morning. Now that one's actually quite dim, <laughs> but the idea of that one is actually I can set it for a timer and have it come on first thing in the morning if it's going to be dark out. Um, pastel, rainbow, sunrise, that's quite a pleasant one. Temperature gradient, and then we've got some standard cool white, sorry, warm white, and then cool white. Um, I say cool white, in reality it's not. It's actually because it's using mainly the white LEDs. The strip of LEDs I've got in there is neutral white. So actually what it's doing is sort of more neutral white. So I could actually add in some blue LED just to cool it off. Um, I'm not entirely sure how the uh, camera is going to deal with the changing white balance. but uh, And obviously there are animated ones. So I've got one here which is supposedly a candle. And then some of the other ones just as a light show more than anything else. Obviously this is designed to be a bedside cabinet, so um, I don't really want to have light shows like this, but it is nice just to, it's just gonna be an accent light or something like that that someone else could use. So that's it pretty much. So um, that's the end of this product anyway. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, starting a new one next week which I've already got some bits underway for um, the design files for this should all be up on Thingiverse or Prusa printers there'll be there'll be a link in the description anyway um, I've also in making this I actually ended up making the entire uh, lamp in 3d so uh, if you actually look at the SketchUp file that'll be in there there's actually the base has been fully redone, these legs have been done uh, in it and then I've done some solid sections for the diffuser with the idea being is that they could be printed in a vase mode so you just get the one uh, ring or one perimeter basically spiralling up um, which should give quite a nice finish hopefully um, but yeah I thought I'd just put those in there just for everyone else to use if you wanted to make your own version of it um, but other than that Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.